Sup y'all, and welcome to Cities and Urban Land Use, Part 3. In this video, we're going to investigate this essential question, how do cities follow predictable patterns? Philosophically speaking, humans are creatures of habit. When we find a pattern that works for us, we tend to repeat it. In nature, we see this as well. The form and shape of objects tend to repeat as they scale upwards in size such as how the veins of a leaf are similar in form and shape to the branches of a tree, or how tributaries and streams are similar to larger rivers. Our settlement patterns often reflect the same scaling attributes. For example, New York City is in many ways a scaled-up Chicago, which is a scaled-up Washington, D.C., which is a scaled-up Philadelphia. When we find something that works at a small scale, we tend to repeat the same process and patterns at larger scales. And this is the founding principle for which cities form. At the basic level, we have needs, such as food or shelter, and wants, such as material goods and entertainment. Urban areas greatly facilitate interaction between people and businesses, benefiting both parties. And now for something completely different. Now a primate city is the leading city in its country or region. It is disproportionately larger than any others in the urban hierarchy. Certain cities that qualify are London, Paris, Buenos Aires, Cairo, Mexico City. The law of the primate city was first proposed by Mark Jefferson back in 1939. He defined a primate city as being at least twice as large as the next largest city and more than twice as significant. A primate city is number one in its country in most aspects, like politics, the economy, culture, education, and so on. Now, many states lack primate cities, mostly developed countries such as the United States, Germany, Canada, and Australia, to name a few. Now, the rank size rule occurs sometimes when a country does not have a dominant primate city. For example, most LDCs, or least developed countries, have capitals that have a high degree of primacy. Now, the rank size rule follows a pattern similar to the Fibonacci sequence, in which each successive number is equal to the sum of the two preceding numbers. This is a pattern that can be seen often in nature, as with a sunflower or aloe, as you see here. And if you plot these numbers on a graph, a spiral forms which matches many of the patterns we see in nature, whether it be a nautilus shell, a low pressure center, or even the whirlpool galaxy. And you can see, if we arrange the U.S. city populations of decades past in the same fashion, a similar pattern forms as well. So to understand what I mean, talking about the number one city back in 1970 New York, was along here, and then you have Chicago to Los Angeles. And if you look at the ranks of populations, and they continue to go around in this fashion, they actually followed very similarly along with the Fibonacci sequence. Now, the rank size rule follows a similar pattern and suggests that there is some predictable order to human nature. The rule, which is similar to George Zipp's law back in 1949, states that the population of a city or town will be inversely proportional to its rank in the urban hierarchy. To put this in mathematical terms, the nth largest city is 1 over n smaller than the largest city. So if the largest city in a country or an urban hierarchy had 12 million people, the second largest city would be one half the population, or 6 million. The third would be one third, or 4 million. And then you go to the fourth, which would be 3 million. The fifth would go to 2.4, and then the sixth would go to 2 million, and so on and so on. So does this theory actually work? Well. In 2004, a study found that Ziff's law was actually rejected for 53 of 73 countries studied. Now, one of the key problems may simply be, how do we define an urban area? Is it the city limits itself, or the built-up urban area around it? What about the suburbs, or the urban realms in general? To look at a country where it would not work, we can look at northern Argentina. Now, here are the numbers if the rank size rule was to follow expectations. With Buenos Aires having over 13 million people, you'd expect the next one to be around 6.5 and, and so on and so on. But in reality, you're looking at Cordoba being significantly smaller. Well, why is this? Well, here's a few reasons, not to have you memorized, but just to understand. Buenos Aires clearly is a primate city. And, being the capital, it favors more growth. So, government officials would certainly be spending a lot of time and money in developing their capital. Because of modern globalization, many other countries also look to invest, and you want to go to a place that already has a lot of infrastructure and a lot of buildings and a lot of specialists already there. 
Furthermore, you see a lot of migration of people from the rural areas in Argentina into the urban areas, and especially Buenos Aires. And also, if you look at the road systems, the transport network, all of them seem to lead all the way into Buenos Aires, which is a major port for an export-oriented country. In contrast, we can look at Germany. We can compare the expected rank size rural numbers, starting with Berlin at 3.4 million people, and then how it would go down in order. But then take a look at the actual populations themselves, and you'll notice that in many cases they come very close to the actual numbers. So you can see between Berlin and Hamburg, and Munich especially, and even down at Stuttgart at the bottom. So why does it work in this instance? Well, for one thing, it's a federal system of government, much like we have in the United States, where you have different independent regions where they make their own laws. So therefore, they develop on their own, as opposed to countries that have a very centralized government, like in England or in France, in which they spend a lot of time and money developing London and Paris, respectively. Also, Germany is an MDC, a more developed country. In this case, the wealth that they have in that country is more equally distributed around. So the development will also be more distributed. And as opposed to Argentina, you can see the transport network here is loaded with expressways and highways all around the country connecting many different urban centers together. Not to mention that during the Cold War, Germany was quite literally divided into two different parts. So East and West Germany did develop independently of each other for all intents and purposes. And then we can take a look at the United States a country that does not have a primate city and actually doesn't truly follow the rank size rule. But if we look at a binary distribution, that can indeed work. Now, as the case with the United States, two cities or more may be larger than predicted. This could happen for a plethora of reasons. For example, a country may be very large. In this case, the rank size rule may apply regionally such as with the metropolitan statistical areas of the United States and their surrounding urban realms. If we were to divide the United States and look at the Northeast, you would notice that it follows relatively close to the rank size rule. Looking at the four largest metropolitan statistical areas and the surrounding agglomerations in New York City, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and Philadelphia, you can see how the numbers decline by around one-half, to one-third, and then one-fourth. Not exactly, but quite close. And the same can be said about the West Coast. Looking at the top four in the West, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Phoenix, and Seattle, you can see they follow a relatively similar pattern. And if I put the two graphs together, and I split the United States into separate regions, considering binary distribution, the rank size rule actually works fairly well. And putting it all together, Essentially, all models are wrong, meaning no model is ever perfect. However, some are useful. The practical question is, how wrong do they have to be not to be useful? In this instance, the rank size rule reflects nature, more specifically, human nature, and it helps to explain why other city models, such as urban realms, also tend to work. That is correct.